Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, if you have not been here before, welcome. My name is Anna Lampwoman and I make mommy videos, basically anything that has to do with me being a new mom. My son Kaz is now eight months old and we are here to tell you guys about our labor and delivery story. And so if you are interested in watching that, then don't click away. Uh -huh. Oh, uh, Kaz over here was due November 17th of 2017 and we actually started labor on the Monday after that which was uh, November 20th, 19th, 20th and uh, he came uh, just after midnight on November 21st. So I wasn't too late um, <laughs> but I was starting to freak out that I was going to go too far over and was going to need to be induced, which thankfully I was not. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I started labor naturally around 4 in the morning on November 20th. I got uh, pretty strong contractions almost right away. Uh, but between 4 and 5 in the morning, my contractions were probably like 10 to 15 minutes apart. So I was able to sleep in between them. I didn't actually count them exactly so I don't know the exact uh, length of them but I know that I was able to still fall asleep in between them so they weren't too crazy. Around 5 in the morning they got really strong uh, and a little bit closer together. At this point I did sit up in bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At this point I did sit up on my bed and I actually started tracking them. They were lasting anywhere between 45 to 55 seconds and they were about 10 minutes apart. They stayed about 10 minutes apart um, probably for about an hour. Around 6 o'clock I realized that the contractions were getting stronger and that they didn't feel like the normal Braxton Hicks contractions that I was feeling before. So I knew that labor had started and I got up and started getting ready. I took, ooh, ooh, okay. <laughs> I got up and took a shower and started getting ready. My husband had a crazy important appointment that morning at 11 o'clock. So when I told him that, um, you know, today was the day and I was in labor, uh, we, of course, were both <laughs> freaking out thinking we were going to have to cancel this appointment that had been set up for a long time, which we didn't want to do. So it just, it was a crazy morning <laughs> because of that. My husband was running around trying to help me, but then also trying to get ready for his business meeting. And I was trying to do last minute cleanups around the house, change the sheets on my bed, just trying to make sure that everything was like ready so that when we did come back from the hospital that the house would be perfect and ready for my new life as a mom. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> Excuse uh, the uh, craziness over here. <laughs> um, so, let's see, around probably 6.30 or 7 in the morning, my contractions started... Um, coming closer and closer together at this point they were about three to four minutes apart and they stayed three to four minutes apart for the remainder of my labor they did not slow down any after that and it was uh just you know as time went by just closer and closer um i mean i'm sorry uh stronger and stronger contractions uh as i was taking a shower i ended up uh, having to take lots of breaks so that I could just like lean forward and try to breathe through my contractions and um, for some reason I I mean it was winter and I, I ended up trying to dry my hair and that took like an hour because <laughs> I would be holding the blow dryer and then trying to like breathe through my contractions so I would have to put it down and then pick it up again it took a long time to dry my hair but it's <laughs> just you know crazy things you think about during labor that later you realize that, you know, who cares if my hair didn't look great. <laughs> like, it's, I ended up being in labor for 21 hours, so my, by the end of it, like, my hair was awful. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. At that point, I really, I just was, like, hoping I would have a short labor, and then I would get all these, like, cute pictures of my baby, and, um, 
you know, I had no idea what labor was like, and so I guess, uh, you know, you fantasize how things are going to happen, and um, th that's kind of one of the reasons why I wanted to, to tell the story is so that I can share all the things that I wanted for my labor and all these things that I hoped would happen and and then how it actually ended up happening basically like expectation versus reality kind of a thing because it's labor and you can plan ahead and of course a lot of women actually do get to have the beautiful birth that they want but some of us don't and some of us um, you know just have the labor that just is meant to be for us and I I respect my body for doing the things that it did and not doing the things that it didn't and I now I'm okay with the decisions that I took that day or that I took before towards uh, what I wanted for my birth and what I didn't. Anyways, to continue with my story, I um, around I want to say probably like 10.45 in the morning. My husband's business appointment was around uh, 11, or was scheduled for 11 o'clock in the morning. So around 10.45, I, my contractions were like really, really strong, and I, I wasn't able to rest at all because I had really, really bad back labor. And so my tailbone was very, very sore. My contractions on my stomach were not that terrible. I mean, they were strong contractions, but I would say 90% of my pain was on my tailbone and my back and I wasn't able to actually find a an okay enough position to actually relieve the pain. I was walking back and forth, I had music on and in between contractions I would try to dance and get my hips moving and then during the contractions I the only thing that I could do was sort of just lean forward, sitting down or trying to bounce on a ball or any of that was just way too painful on my tailbone so I couldn't do those things so <laughs> I am trying to film a video and I need you to be less crazy yes I need you to be less crazy because I'm trying to film he's not helping <laughs> I love you so around 10.45, I called my mom and I said, hey, you know, come to my house instead. I need you bad. And uh, in the meantime, my husband went to his appointment. I labored at home a little bit longer while my mom was here. But by this time, I was starting to get scared because, like I said, my back labor was so strong that I couldn't sit down and so I was really scared about having to ride to the hospital in the car and how much that was going to hurt. So as I got more scared I think my body got more tense and the more tense I got the stronger my contractions got and at this point like my mommy was there and so it was hard for me to like just breathe and be fine and it, it became more of a primal thing and I like was crying during my contractions and and was feeling them I think more and um, so I decided that that I wasn't going to be able to labor at home that much longer I at this point had been laboring for uh, let me think like eight hours so I thought that I was like pretty far along and it was like time to head to the doctor so I called my husband to see how he was doing with the meeting to see if he could head home and um, you know, told him basically it's time to head to the hospital and he needed to come home. So he finished up his meeting as fast as he possibly could and got home probably around 12.30. Um, around that time, um, my mom was just trying to grab the bags, putting everything in the car and trying to help me basically move from the living room to the car, which took like at least a good like three contractions because I couldn't actually take steps in between the contraction, so I had to like take a couple steps in between the contraction and then like as I was contracting I was just like leaning forward and like trying to breathe and more like yelling. <laughs> you like yell breathing like, <gasps> like just very deep painful <laughs> uh, screams. Uh, but I finally did make it to the car and thankfully the hospital is only 10 minutes from my house but even still, my contractions at this point were so crazy that they were coming super close together and I believe I had either five or six contractions just in the 10 minutes that it takes to get to the hospital and they were horrible because sitting down was just 
excruciating, I would say the last like two contractions in the car, like right before we were getting to the hospital, I like actually like screamed out loud and my poor husband was like, breathe, I'm like, don't tell me to breathe. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, I, I knew it and I wasn't trying to be mean to him, but I was just in a lot of pain. So I got to the hospital. We got to the hospital, I would say, close to around 1.30 in the afternoon. And um, I know you're so tired. Might have to take a break here. It might be nap time for someone I know. It might be nap time. You're being too crazy. <laughs> we'll be back. So, as I was saying, we got to the hospital probably around 1.30 in the afternoon-ish. And, um, like I said, I had been feeling very, very strong contractions for a long time. And I was thinking that I was really, like, super dilated and, like, I was in a lot of pain. But at the same time, I was really excited because I was coming into the hospital thinking they were going to be like, Hey, yeah, you're seven centimeters. And... You know, in a few hours we'll be pushing, and, and so I was excited that I had made it all those hours and that I was doing such a good job. And they got me into triage, and she checks me, and I had dilated a half of a centimeter in like nine and a half or ten hours, and it, it broke my spirit. It really did. I, I cried, and I was just broken. <laughs> like emotionally because I was excited that I had made it this far and then I get there and they're like no you've barely done anything <laughs> and uh, I mean they didn't say that of course that the nurses were actually really sweet and they were like you're just a first-time mom and this part is what takes the longest and so um, you are moving along you're 70% of phase like things are happening but you know they're just not usually very fast with first labor so they they told me I could walk around the hospital and see and if I can get something done so I did I walked around for a while uh, and then my my doctor showed up and um, told me that she could give me like a, some pain medication that that would help me rest and asked me if I was interested in doing that and like I said at, at this point I like was just emotionally just drained and physically drained and so tired I hadn't been able to sit down since you know five in the morning because my contractions hurt so bad when I sat down that I didn't feel like I was able to rest for even a minute that whole time so when she gave me the option of resting with a little pain medication I decided to take it and woo, hi so they um they gave me, it was a little pill, I don't actually remember what it was, but it was a little pill that was a complete game changer because it helped me, it, it made me really drowsy, so I was actually able to sleep, which was amazing. About an hour and a half after they um, woke me up to check me to see how, uh, if I had dilated at all, and I had actually dilated to a seven. So I went from... Uh-huh. I went from a one and a half to a seven in less than two hours. So obviously that's why I was hurting so bad because my labor was actually moving along really quickly, especially in, in the last uh, few hours. So that made me really excited. And at that point I was like, yeah, maybe I can make it without an epidural because now I'm at a seven. Like if I keep dilating this quickly, like I should be pushing in a couple hours and I can do this. And uh, I just want to get in the tub and oh my goodness, the rooms in the hospital here have these awesome like deep tubs and I just wanted to get in the water so bad. So they were like, okay, well we can prepare to do that. Uh, but since you ha are dilating so quickly, we kind of need you to make a decision now on whether or not you want to have an epidural because if you keep dilating this quickly, it's possible that even within an hour, uh, you will dilate enough to where it'll be too late to get an epidural. So if you want one, tell us now so we can start, so we can call the anesthesiologist and start getting that ready for you. Um, because if you're going to want one, you you basically just need to decide before it's too late not to get one. And um, I just, I, <laughs> I didn't want to do it. And there was a lot of reasons why I didn't want to do it because I had done a lot of research about um, epidurals and the possibility of 
more medical intervention after you have an epidural and ended up, you know, having to have Pitocin and getting your water broken and eventually a C-section and all these things that you hear and I just, I didn't want to do it, but I was so tired and when, after they checked me, my pill wore off and the contractions came back like stronger than before and it was so painful and I just, I, I didn't think that I could do it and I, I decided to get it and um, so I decided to say yes. And the anesthesiologist actually showed up so fast <laughs> that I didn't even have time to get into the water. So he was there probably within 20 minutes. Like, I wasn't able to get out of bed because of the contractions I was having and it was just hard for me to move at that point. So um, I, I just got the epidural. So the anesthesiologist did an amazing job. Uh, he took all of the pain away but not the sensation of my legs or the control of my movements, which I have heard both sides of the spectrum, women who um, don't get numb all the way to women who get way too numb and they're not able to even wiggle their own toes. I had complete control of my lower body, of course it was a lot weaker, but I was able to change positions in bed, I was able to wiggle my toes, lift my legs, all of that, uh, but not have my awful, awful contraction pain anymore and my tailbone pain and uh, my hip pain and, and all of the things associated with the contractions and those pains. So that was fantastic and it just it was such a relief to be able to rest and I, I battled the emotions um, of it because I didn't want to do it and I was super disappointed in myself for making that choice, but at the same time I was so relieved to get a rest and enjoy my labor and be excited about having a baby and not only being in pain and not being able to think about the fact that I was going to be a mom because I was in so much pain. So um, I was able to rest after I got my uh, epidural, I was able to sleep, and I was woken up by my mom. Um, a bit concerned that the baby's heart rate had spiked up really high and she wanted me to change posi change positions and see if maybe um, you know something was being pinched or it, it might have been just my sleeping position that was uh, making his heart rate weird so um, I changed, posi changed positions and that seemed to do the trick for about one contraction and then after that his heart rate started dropping really bad with every contraction. His normal heart rate was anywhere between 130 to uh, 160 uh, and his heart rate was dropping down to about 60. So it was really scary. Every contraction there was like another nurse in the room and then they would make me change positions and then it would be fine and then, then it would get bad again and then more nurses and more nurses and uh, towards the end of it there was just I mean, I don't even know, <laughs> a bunch of nurses in there. Um, and, uh, oh wait, I, uh, I went a little too far forward. Um, a few hours after I got my epidural, I got checked and I hadn't progressed more than a half a centimeter. And my doctor was a bit concerned that maybe the epidural had sort of uh, slowed down my labor. Um, and she wanted to give me Pitocin and wanted to give me, uh, and wanted to break my water. And I said, no, I was like, nope, this is exactly what I thought. I knew that if there was um, an epidural that there would be more medical interventions and I did not want any. So no, I am not getting Pitocin, I'm not getting my water broken. And um, she was like, okay, well, I really think you should. You know, we don't want to stall for too long. Um, we'll give it another hour. So she gave it another hour, came back, checked me. I hadn't, I hadn't uh, dilated anymore. And so she talked to me again about getting Pitocin and having my water broken. And um, I decided to have her break my water and not give me Pitocin. I told her I absolutely did not want Pitocin on this. It was medically necessary. In my case it was not necessary, they just wanted to speed it up. And um, she broke my water and I believe I am not a doctor or a nurse or have uh, 
medical experience when it comes to birthing or anything like that, but it is my belief that it was because they broke my water that his umbilical cord got pinched and uh, that is why he, with every contraction um, after that his heart rate was dropping. Um, fast forward into his heart dropping and me changing positions, um, it, it got to the point where no matter what position I changed to, his heart rate was still dropping and maybe it would get okay with like one or two contractions if I was like on all fours or just on my left or on my right or in different positions but in, in general it just continued to drop and my doctor spoke with me about the dangers of his heart rate dropping and how it is normal for the heart rate to go up and down during labor so she talked to me about getting a c-section and I obviously didn't want to do that but I was not going to put my baby's life at risk either so um, we talked about it and we gave it a few more contractions um, things did not get better and so she recommended that that we go ahead and do it she told me if if we go ahead and do it now then we are having a very safe surgery because we are not going into the surgery in an emergency basis and we're not going into the surgery just get the baby out and save its life we're going into the surgery calmly and very safely and and it's better for the baby and for you to do it this way than to for you to like hesitate longer and, and end up having to have one in an emergency and um, you know and then something happening. So I of course started crying again and I was super disappointed. I was really mad at myself for choosing to have an epidural, for not handling the pain, for being weak, for I didn't feel like I was woman enough to handle my labor and the pains and I chose to do that and because I chose to do that I had to have my water broken and then now a c-section and if something happened it would be my fault for for not being able to handle it for being weak and, it, and, and I know now that it just things are meant to happen the way they were meant to happen and, and like I said I don't regret any of my decisions because it, it brought me to my baby and he's safe and I'm fine, but um, but at that moment, that's that's what I was feeling. I was really disappointed. I was sad. Um, that's not the expectation I had for for my labor. I thought that I would have this obviously painful labor, but that I would be able to handle it, and I would be like badass woman who was able to do it, and and went through it, and and felt when it was time to push, and got my baby out, and would be able to get up and walk with my baby right after my baby was born and, and I had all these expectations that at that point were not going to come true and it made me really mad and sad and I went through a whole lot of emotions and at the same time like because I had all these expectations of having a natural birth I didn't do too much research into c-sections and the few things that I had read about c-sections of course were like horror stories of these women who like bled to death after going in for a c-section and so then that was like the only thing on my mind I'm like what if I die and all these fears that go through your head and I was crying and, and at that moment they were like okay let's get the team in they sent my husband in to like get all scrubbed up while they prepared me for for labor all this team came in the surgical team <laughs> So they kicked my mom out, they started like taking me into the OR. As soon as they walked me into that room and those doors opened, I had like this sense of like complete relief, like those like big deep sighs that you take where you're just like, ah, like just let all of it go. It doesn't matter that I have been in pain, it doesn't matter that I'm scared. It, like n none of those decisions and those things that, that I had cried about like mattered at that moment and all I thought about was like oh my gosh like now I don't have to wait who knows how many hours of labor before I meet my baby I'm about to meet my baby like any second now I am going to be a mom so um, they got me into the arm and they like put me on the bed and started preparing me for surgery they they started like feeling my stomach and sort of shaking me and, and they asked me if I could feel it and I, I told them I could feel them touching me and I could feel them moving me, which was a crazy experience that you could feel 
them shaking your body and touching the, the, you can feel where they touch you but you don't feel any pain but um i uh i i asked them to like not start until my husband got there and they all laughed and said of course they wouldn't start until he was there and it took him a minute i guess to get scrubbed up so he walks in the room he was wearing scrubs and the mask and the thing on his head and the first thought i had was like oh my god he looks adorable so <laughs> i look over at him and i'm like wow you look super hot and then everyone in the OR room just starts laughing. They're like, oh, we've never heard that before. That's too funny. Like, usually, like, moms are, like, mad at their husbands at this point. Uh, but he did. He just looked so good and, and scrubs. And he looked, I don't know, he just looked hot. And it, it just came out of me. So, <laughs> so it, it couldn't have been more than, like, three minutes from the time that my husband walked in until I heard my baby cry. And it was the best sound I've ever heard in my life and I just I, I couldn't believe it it was so fast it was so fast and he was out and he was here and later my husband told me that he cried before his body was even out so they took his head out of me and then he like cried and then they took the rest of his body out so that must have looked really funny just his head being ah. <laughs> but then um, they took down they had like two curtains in front of me like the the blue one and then like a clear one so when um, they took Kaz out they took down the the blue one so that I could see to the through the clear one so um, they like ended up just like lifting him up because I, I couldn't see me or I couldn't see where he was where they had him so they like lifted him up in the air and he was just you know covered and all that good stuff <laughs> it was like the most beautiful thing I had ever seen in my life and he was just giving out this like just perfect sound of cry and and it, I can't even explain the happiness that I felt at that moment and you know they do say that like you like forget about your pain when you see your baby and like you don't forget about your pain obviously um, but you just realize that it doesn't matter what you went through that it was worth it and it was 21 hours of really hard labor and then surgery which was unexpected but but I was a mom and he was here and and it didn't matter nothing mattered they put him over on the little like warming table to like you know clean him up or whatever and then my husband was just sitting next to me like watching like trying to see in between the nurses and I was like what are you doing go over there and so he like got up and he's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, go be with our baby. Like, who cares about me? I'm fine. <laughs> so he went over there and stood next to them and they passed them to him like immediately. So he was able to hold him. And then he passed them to me and they put him on my chest and on my face. So I just closed my eyes and I felt him and I cried and I just like told him how much I loved him. And I just kept like hitting my husband with my hand, just being like, he's perfect, he's perfect. <laughs> and, uh, and he was, he was perfect. So then uh, they told me that the baby was ready and that he, you know, needed to go on to the next room. So my husband and him were able to go into uh, the room and while well, they finished like stitching me up. And then just a few minutes after that, not very long, I was able to go into the room as well. And uh, my husband passed me my baby and I was able to breastfeed immediately. And uh, he latched on like really good. He just... You know, some babies have issues, and, and I he didn't. So we got sent home on Thanksgiving night. It's the best Thanksgiving of my life. <laughs> uh, hardest Thanksgiving of my life, too, because recuperating from surgery was really tough. And that might be a story for another video, but it was a very, very long six weeks of very hard recovery. I uh, had a hard time standing up even to go to the bathroom, and it was very painful. And I don't know if it really is like that for everybody, but for me it was it was really hard. And um, but I made it through. And uh, my uh, breastfeeding is probably gonna have to be a whole other video too because that's a whole other can of worms. <laughs> but we will probably talk about that uh, in the next few videos or just later. If you guys are interested in hearing more about that or any other subject or anything else that we've gone through in the last eight months then please leave a comment down below 
if you enjoy oh, listening yeah. to our story and watching this little guy just squirm around, then give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe if you guys want to see more from us, which we should be posting very soon. We have some um, video already recorded just of the last like few months, things uh, here and there that we have recorded. Uh, him swimming and just a lot of first and some traveling uh, that we did. So we will be putting that on a video soon. Uh, any other requests? Uh, again, don't forget to put them in the comments down below or any questions. And I uh, hope to see you guys soon. Can you say bye? Ah, are you sending kisses? Can you say bye bye? Bye bye. He's learning how to wave, but that's not on command yet. Can you say bye? Bye. Bye.